In today's retirement case study, we're looking at an article from Interactive Investor. I'll put a link to the URL in the description. It's a really interesting one and I hope you enjoy it. So here are the stats. Ian is age 57, looking retired at 60. He's got a DB pension, 17,000 a year that he's currently taking. And then he gets another one of 5,000 when he's 65. Unfortunately, he has type two diabetes, which is maybe causing him to retire slightly earlier than he'd like to. His wife, Rachel, is 54, looking to retire at 55. When she is 55, she'll get a pension of 15,000 a year and a 45,000 pound lump sum. Their savings are a SIP of 81K, ISA 7K, premium bonds 55K, house worth 550,000. Their desired income is 60,000 pounds, which might be before or after tax. But as you can see, it's kind of 60K no way, because how are they going to get that when they haven't really got any savings? But what we're going to do is look at their numbers in detail and work out the best options for them. So here is the couple's income when they're 70 and they're both in receipt of a full state pension. So Ian's got about 33K, Rachel about 26K. So it's a really good balance between the two. They pay a bit of tax at 20%, no tax at 40%, no national insurance. And so their disposable income is nearly 52,000 pounds a year, which isn't far off their 60K target. The only problem is that because allowances for taxes are currently being frozen, by the time they do reach 70, there will be a higher tax burden in terms of like a lower personal allowance in real terms. So actually their purchasing power will be slightly reduced. So Ian took his DB pension at the first opportunity. But when you look at his target income at 70, maybe it kind of makes sense. He was also able to put his DB pension income into his SIP and get tax relief on it and then potentially 25% tax free on the SIP and more flexible access to his money. Now, this can be called pension recycling. and You have to be a bit careful about it, but it could be quite a shrewd move. So 5K a month is a lot of money to spend in retirement if it's every year for the rest of your life. UK research suggests that people continue to spend less as they get older. It's only in the US where you've got rising healthcare costs that can cause higher expenditure in later life. So what Ian and Rachel need to do is get a budget to show where their money really is going and to prove that they really do have larger financial needs later on in life. I think Ian and Rachel have two options. One is to retire at 60 with some reduction in expenditure. The other is for Ian to retire at 58, same time as Rachel, and have a purpose in life that also generates income. And I just love the phrase, teach what you are passionate about, which is essentially what I do with my website. And I think if he does something like that, he can get a bit more income in retirement. He can wake up with things to do and a purpose and possibly live a more fulfilling life. Put the numbers into my retirement calculator spreadsheet. It shows that a couple basically live off around about 50,000 for most of their retirement, but they can have a couple of splurge years of 60,000 in the early phase of retirement. And when we look at the wealth by type, what we see is that Ian's initially saving, then he's running down his assets, and then they pretty much plateau because he's just spending all the money that he gets from defined benefit and state pensions. The alternative for Ian is to retire at age 58, so two years earlier. If he does this, he has to take less income, particularly in the early years of retirement, as he hasn't saved so much money. But at the back end, he's still got all his state and DB pensions. So here's Ian's wealth profile, and he basically retires in 2025 and then just continually draws down on his wealth. And here's a graph comparing the two scenarios. So a direct quote from the article, the IFA suggests rebalancing the portfolio away from equities and towards fixed income or bonds and alternatives because of Ian's age, health and market conditions. It says bonds tend to be less volatile, well, sometimes, although they have a lower chance of higher returns. 
and they want Ian to rebalance towards 11% bonds, 20% UK equities, 30% global equities, 35 sorry, and 34% in alternatives. So the issue here is that instead of UK, it really needs to say maybe more like value equities. There's no real need to have a specific allocation to your home country. Uh, and then talking about alternatives, I think you need to be very careful there and really say exactly what you mean. Some alternatives are very esoteric and things like property, infrastructure uh, can end up being very niche, can end up having lots of troubles if interest rates rise or if regulation changes. So I think really you need equities, bonds, maybe different types of equities, different types of bonds and possibly commodities, but I would be a bit careful about so much alternatives. So one of the funds the IFA recommended was Merlin Income Portfolio from Jupiter, and it's this orange line here. And interestingly enough, around the time of the article, it was performing in a similar manner to a global tracker, but since about June 2020, there's been quite a change in performance. The ongoing charges fee of this Jupiter Merlin fund is 1.34% on Hargreaves Lansdowne, which is very high for something that is defensive and it's never going to shoot the lights out in terms of returns. So I really couldn't recommend it. It's got a fairly interesting mix of assets here. But I really think you should try for something else with lower fees. The article also mentions Vanguard Life Strategy 60 which has had a pretty similar performance with the Jupiter Merlin, although clearly it has a lot lower fees. But I would prefer to separate out my bond holding from my equity holding so that I could be more strategic or maybe tactical about how I approach bonds, depending on whether interest rates are rising or falling. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my website, ianshadrack.com for information about my retirement calculator and my portfolio coaching. Let me know your comments about future videos you'd like to see and anything you particularly liked about this video and maybe check out this next one that I've done.